Thank you, Brother Richard, and thank you, Brothers and Sisters of Philadelphia. And it indeed is an honor to be asked to come and speak to the Marcus Garvey African Lecture Series for the UNIA, a very long and illustrious history. And I'll try to do my best to be clear in speaking on these, these points related to the issues of melanin as it relates to black dot. What is black dot? What is melanin? I'm certain many of you have already had some exposure to these very old concepts. The name melanin is not the comedic name. It is probably more of a Greek name or thereabouts. And it was used in referring to a person, a, uh, a certain mythological story that probably has African roots. The mythological story is one in which supposedly Europa, who was a goddess of types, and she and her girlfriends were walking along the seashore, and the god Zeus, who we now know, was just the Europeanized version of a much older god type that was African in nature. But supposedly Zeus saw Europa and then became uh, interested in her and then changed himself into a white bull. And then Europa got on the back of the white bull and the bull rolled across the ocean to the island of Crete. Well, that certainly is a Europeanized version. I don't know what the African roots of, of it are. But in this concept, one of the children of this union was that of melon, a melano, and it referred to black. Another reference refers to melon as referring to the blackness that occurs in the sky when the sun sets in the west. Now, both of these versions are found in the book uh, Black Athena by Martin Banal, the second volume. There's another reference to melon, which refers to another mythological story in which Melanos was a man who overheard some snakelets. The mother of a snake family was killed, and the snakelets were left without anyone, and he befriended the snakes and fed them, and as a sign of return, they taught him how to communicate telepathically with the animal kingdom. So what is a common thread in all this? One, certainly has to do with blackness. Two, it has to do with extraordinary powers. From whose point of view are these powers extraordinary? Why aren't they ordinary powers? And if they are ordinary powers, what kind of game is being played to make them seem to be extraordinary. In the book uh, that has just been recently released by John Henry Clark, Africa at the Crossroads, World Revolution, he makes known a very important point that was earlier made by Adam Ben Sertima, that in this year, 1992, suppose somebody is going to celebrate come October the 500-year anniversary of somebody named Cristopo Colombo, who is said to have discovered people who greeted him in a more humanized state on the seashore, and within a matter of two or three years, he had killed them off by the millions. And so John Henry Clark calls this the, and Van Servant called this the 500-year room. The great lie, the great game of cover-up to hide a whole nother world view, a whole, a whole history, if you will, biological history and written history, of all of humanity, to present a great lie that models the world in the image of a child and hides the biological realities of the parent. So this is, this is critical. So this five, I'm saying that as we enter into the discussions of melanin, there has been a reversal and a lie going on that tries to cover up the biological records of what the 
the man who has hue or human, people of color, what your true biological potentials are. And there's a great cover-up, a great lie, just as there was, is in the written history. So here we go. Now there are three documents that are available for you today, and I'm going to draw upon them as we kind of march through some things. One is the book, The African Origin of Biological Psychiatry. And this is a book that I have worked on for at least, oh goodness, all of my adult life. <laughs> And then it was published in the journal Uraeus, which is a publication of the Aquarian Spiritual Center in Los Angeles from the years 1982 through 19, 1978 through 1982. These are the articles that I contributed. And the other articles published thereafter. And in this uh, came the, the uh, series of articles named Uraeus, parts one through four, and Black Dot, parts one through three. Earlier work had been done on the esoteric theory of press theory, an earlier work had, and then more recent work was published that was never published any place else, and that was on the Eye of Horus as it is defined in the pyramid text, and the Eye of Horus as it is defined in the coffin text. The pyramid text, or the text of ancient Egypt, dating from the time of the Old Kingdom, 3000 BC to about 2200 BC. Uh, roughly almost 5,000 years ago. The coffin text or the Middle Kingdom text, roughly about 2200 to about, about 1800 or so BC. That's the middle period. So these are the religious texts in which we find that Africans had talked about melanin under the heading of the word Kim, K-M. What does Kim mean? It means black. And as Carol Bourne in this book did make known, that the study of chemistry, history, study of chem black, is really the study of blackness. In particular, the study of organic chemistry. The study of those chemicals that contain large amounts of the atom known as carbon, C-A-R-B-O-N. Carbon, the same atom that makes up diamond earrings, diamond rings, crystalline form, but in its more liquid form, it is blackness. The graphite on your pencil? What about the blackness on your skin? The black in your coloring of your eyes? The black in your brain, yes. Melanin in the core of the brain. So that in, these, in this book, we reviewed, especially in Black Dots Part 1, 2, and 3, the biological record of blackness as it operates in biological systems from before birth, from conception, all the way through the, the genus, gestation in the mother's womb and the birth thereafter. We could show blackness in every life stage. But yet, the great...